Hey, this is Angel. In this video, I'll be discussing narcissistic abuse. How do we get back to emotional regulation? Welcome to, or welcome back to, Narc Repellent. This channel is devoted to those seeking understanding, strategies, and support as they are recovering from narcissistic or toxic relationship abuse and trauma. If you're interested in gaining further perspective on these subjects, I hope you'll stay tuned. Our topic-related quote for the day comes from Anne Frank. Feelings can't be ignored, no matter how unjust or ungrateful they seem. Sweet Anne. She never made it into adulthood, of course, but was quite mature in her thinking about feelings and emotions. Okay, my new family of friends, let's dive into today's topic. After narcissistic abuse, how do we get back to emotional regulation? In this video, I intend to break down what happens to our emotional regulation during and after a relationship with a toxic person and hope to provide some strategies for getting back to trusting our intuition. First though, I'd like to take this moment to invite you to subscribe to my channel, share and like, and please comment as you know YouTubers need that in order to survive. I'd like to acknowledge those who've been loyally watching my videos as well as my new subscribers. Please feel free to add comments about your experience with emotional regulation, emotional flashbacks, etc. Your submitted comments will go through me first as I want to watch for predators and sales comments, but I would really like to hear from you. Okay, now on with our topic. Emotional regulation, emotional maturity. You know, the more I learn about narcissism and narcissistic abuse, the more I realize how much my experience of being emotionally and psychologically abused in that relationship, and probably all through my childhood as well, has affected me, and how many others are out there who are in the same place. We're all looking for answers. Let me just say that the most important thing to begin healing is to isolate yourself from the abuser. You'll need to be out of that relationship in order to heal from it. The narcissist or toxic person's influence will continue to hinder you if they're still in your life. If you're currently suffering from emotional abuse from a toxic person, please know that you're not alone. You will need support and guidance to begin healing from the extensive emotional and psychological damage that has been done to you. Seek support in many ways. Due to the emotional havoc the narcissist causes to our mind, we become easily brainwashed or programmed to their reality. We simply become addicted to the stages of abuse with the great love infiltrating only as necessary to keep us hooked. The insanity of living in the reality of the narcissist will cause extreme emotional dysregulation. We will begin doubting ourselves and our own reality. These are not just words, my friends. If you're anything like me, a sensitive, compassionate person, and you suffered emotional and psychological abuse from a narcissist or other toxic person at any time in your life, you have then suffered ongoing trauma. Your emotions will easily overwhelm you. Please take this seriously. When you've grown up in, it, in an adverse childhood environment, if you've felt trapped in an abusive relationship where you were tortured emotionally, you will have been in survival mode. The fight, flight, fright, freeze, fade mode when you feel stuck in an invisible torture chamber where you have been reduced to being in a childlike state where you can't escape, then you most probably could be suffering from symptoms of CPTSD R, chronic post-traumatic stress disorder or response. This is a direct response to what you went through. This is what all the mental health professionals have been talking about on YouTube and TV. Now, not to minimize what's going on in the world right now, but to bring this subject into today's thinking, Narcissism is its own pandemic. We've been watching and concerned about this for years. Those of us who've been in a relationship with a narcissist and we quite possibly grew up with a narcissist parent will be having challenges regulating our emotions. It's almost as if that experience and what it did to our brain functioning has thrown us back into an emotional immaturity where we just can't trust our own intuition. Now, that's an interesting outcome I didn't consider until recently, but my intuition has been totally screwed up. Cambridge Dictionary defines intuition as an ability to understand or know something without needing to think about it or to use reason to discover it or a feeling that shows this ability. Well, I've doubted my gut instinct since getting away from that narc. 
The reason for all this doubting of ourselves is directly connected to the emotional and psychological abuse we endured. Chances are you also suffer from emotional flashbacks like me. It happens all day long, although it's eased up a bit in the months post-NARC. According to Pete Walker, MA, MFT, who has written a number of articles on the topic, he states that emotional flashbacks are a complex mixture of intense and confusing reliving of past trauma. It's like living a nightmare while you're awake with overwhelming sorrow, toxic shame, and a sense of inadequacy. Here are a few examples of how it happens to me. When I brush my teeth, I dry my face on a towel hanging next to the sink. In that moment, I can see him, the narc, also drying his face on that same towel, like we used to do when he lived with me. I had to move that freaking towel to get it out of my sight to the other side of the bathroom. I needed that image out of my mind. An emotional flashback, right? Then the other day, I was listening to a YouTube podcast which had a recording of a narc raging at his partner. Although I knew better in that instant, I also had my ex-narc raging in my mind. This emotional flashback came after the trigger of hearing the rage. Now I know that I won't listen to anything like that again. Well, maybe until I get a little stronger emotional maturity at least. Then while sauteing scallions in a pan, the image of our cooking dinners together haunts me, makes me not want to cook in my own kitchen. Then I was watching that new Dixie Chicks video about being gaslighted. I began weeping with each strand of that song I could not only relate to what they were singing about, but I saw my ex-narc's stone face with that fake grin. I'm thinking about doing a video on that experience. Wow. I understand that there's a lot going on in the brain involving the amygdala, the hypothalamus, the chemicals that are being released when all this is happening. That's definitely not my area of expertise, and I'm not going to go there. But what I do know is that we need to reduce this heightened emotional response and the flashbacks causing dysregulation by healing the wounds which are causing the flashbacks. Suffice it to say that a conscious and deliberate effort is needed to work through this pain on many levels. So what do we need to do to get back our emotional regulation, our emotional maturity, what we used to know about trusting our intuition, our gut response, so that we feel more emotionally literate? Well. First of all, we need to learn how to identify the types of triggers that are leading to these emotional flashbacks. You'll have to be able to identify and avoid the unsafe places, people, and activities that trigger you. Manage triggering situations that are unavoidable with deep breathing or, or any other method you know that calms you down as the triggering will probably continue. Number two, cultivate friendships, therapeutic interventions, or other support. Whether you believe in therapy, religion, meditation, or other spiritual resources, or whatever, you definitely need support when working on these issues. Close friends, a trauma specialist could be helpful, but I'll leave those decisions up to each individual. Just be sure to have someone you trust that you can talk through these things with. It's hard to do this on your own. The most important thing is that you work to resolve the abuse you suffered. Number three, you've got to listen to your body. Listen and watch for messages you receive from other people's interactions with you. As your brain begins to heal and you begin to get back in touch with your body, you'll want to pay closer attention to the messages you see, receive when others are in your space. Trust these messages. This is your intuition trying to come through. After an experience like this, we will want to be diligent, but not hypersensitive to what we perceive about people. Number four, learn to trust communication. Of course, communications with others need to be clear and respectful in order to even have a relationship. Listen to what could be false about another person's communication with you. Again, don't be hypersensitive, but be more alert to what's being communicated in the words and the body language of others. Number five, rekindling your own intuition. As you are healing, rewiring is happening in your brain. You'll be able to, again, secure your ideas of what your preferences and desires are your incredible personality, your rebirthed personality, will emerge as you are healing and the abuse is resolving. Expect to be awesome. Number six, figure out what the flashbacks are all about. Believe it or not, flashbacks can be opportunities to discover, validate, and heal our wounds from past emotional and psychological abuse. 
They also point to our possible unmet childhood needs and can provide motivation to find out more mature ways to achieve the, these needs. Number seven, be patient with the recovery process. It will take time to learn how to manage and regulate our emotions. It will take considerable time in the future as we gradually learn to decrease the intensity, duration, and frequency of our emotional flashbacks. That's about it today on emotional flashbacks. Remember that like many things in life, narcissism is on a spectrum of its own. The behaviors and experiences will vary for each of us, but you can expect to be drawn into the narcissist's manipulated reality, a very dark world where your emotions and psyche will suffer from abuse. What are the lessons here? Be patient and kind to yourself. Know that it took time for someone to manipulate your mind, cause emotional and psychological damage to you, to the point that you doubted your own intuition and ability to manage your emotions. It will take time and devotion to not only undo what's been done, but to emerge a stronger, more emotionally regulated individual. If you are suffering from narcissistic or a toxic relationship, please know there are many avenues of support. You are definitely not alone in your struggle for understanding and for want of more power over the narcissist. Please don't stay isolated during this time Get good help. It takes time to heal from these wounds. Give yourself lots of time. Take time today to love and honor yourself. You truly deserve that. And thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Have a graceful day.